All right, we started talking about, uh, or we are going to start talking about solving systems of equations by graphing in the class. So I thought I'd make this really quick. Uh, hopefully, it's a very short video. I'm going to be using the TS-73 calculator here. If you have another one, they have an awesome intersection uh, function that you should look up, and it'll make this much easier than what I'm going about to show you. But if not, Here's how we do it. When we solve systems of equations by graphing, what we're really talking about is the idea that if we have two lines on a graph, the points on these lines represents their solution set. So when I plug in x, I get this y. And all of those possibilities are represented by the line. Now if I have two lines, there is often a point in which these two lines intersect. That point is the point where their solution sets overlap. And that is the solution to the uh, system of equations. Now, there are some other situations that may occur. For instance, if I have parallel lines. When I have parallel lines, my answer is going to have no solution because they don't intersect. There's also another situation in which maybe I write, say, y equals 3 x plus 6, and the other one I'm trying to figure out is y equals 3 times x plus 2. Well, then when I work this one out, the distributive property part, I get y equals 3x plus 6, which is exactly the same as the first one. So when I have two representations of the same line, to draw it, it would be the same line, oops, just drawn twice. So I say that I have all real numbers, which means no matter what I plug in for y and x, it's the exact same line. Two lines with the same slope and the same intercept are the same line. So you could have special situations where you have no solution, or you have like an all real number situation in which you uh, pick the answer, uh, or which you have the same line just written in two different ways like we had here. Now, usually that doesn't work out that way. So let's do a couple in the calculator to take a look at how we solve these and find the point of intersection. Now in this case, y is already by itself. So the goal, the first step is obviously to get y by itself. It may already be by itself and one not the other and you just have to flip one. You may have to flip both. It depends on the problem. So the next step is just to graph it. So you just graph it in the y equals button. Like I said, you might have to turn, uh, I've mentioned before maybe that you have to turn the plots off to do that. You just go second and then go down to number four, turn the plots off. That's in case you had a scatter plot or something else. Anyway, um, I'm going to type in negative one third x plus one, and then go down and do negative four thirds x minus two. Then I'm going to hit graph. The reason we're going to graph it, you may be able to figure it out just based on the way that they look. You may also need to go into the table to figure out the exact point of intersection. But what you should pay attention to here is where they cross. So in this case they cross where x's are negative. That's going to come in really handy. Now we're going to look at the table. So you hit second and then hit table. You should get a nice list of things. Now what we're going to look for is the x oops, in which the y's are exactly the same because that would mean that at that point their x's and y's match and that's the solution. We saw earlier that it's probably in the negatives. So I'm going to click up here and see if I can find it and there it is. You see that when the x is negative 3, my graph for the first one has a y of 2, and the graph for the second one has a, answer, uh, has a value of 2. So my answer set is just negative 3, 2, because this is the x and y in which these two points are the same. You can actually test it, by the way. If I went back in and typed in uh, negative 3 for x into all this, I should get a, two, a y of 2. So let's test it out real fast parentheses, negative 3, plus 1, and I get 2 like I'm supposed to. Let's try the other one, negative 4 thirds, and then where the x is, I'm going to put parentheses and put negative 3, minus 2, hit enter, and see they're both 2 just like they're supposed to. So this is my solution. Let's look at another one. Sometimes you get ones that aren't nearly as nice. You get ones that are in uh, standard form. In this case, remember to follow uh, the steps by the way, I forgot to mention the third step is check table. So we're going to follow these steps. We're going to get y by itself. So I'm going to draw the line here. I'm going to move the x over by subtracting x. 
bring down negative 2y, negative 1x plus 8. I'm going to divide by negative 2 here, and negative 2 here, and negative 2 here. y is equal to 1 half x minus 4. On the other side, I need to subtract x. Negative 2y equals negative 1x plus 4. I'm going to divide by negative 2. y equals 1 half x minus 2. Now you might see or notice early on that the uh, slopes themselves or the things in front of x here and here are the same, which would mean that they're parallel. So you could just go ahead and say parallel lines mean no solution. But we're going to continue on anyway. Just to follow the steps, we're going to graph them next. In case you don't notice that, and for like, what is he talking about, then you didn't notice. So I'm going to type in 1 half x minus 4, and then I'm going to type in 1 half x minus 2, and I'm going to graph it. Wait for the little lines to come out there. And as you can see, those lines are parallel, which means the table will never show you a value where they cross because they don't cross. And you can pretty much tell that they're parallel or not, even if the range of your calculator is really small. So in this case, if you see this, go back and check to see that the uh, slopes are the same. And if they are, your answer is no solution because they never actually cross each other. So let's do one more, and that's it. So in this case, x, uh, y is not by itself, and that's the first step. So we're going to do this. Subtract 2x from both sides. y is equal to negative 2x plus 2. On the other side, I need to subtract 2x. 3y is equal to negative 2x minus 6. So I need to divide by 3 on all the sides. y is equal to negative 2 thirds x minus 2. So see, the slopes aren't the same here. So this is going to be one that I'm going to have to graph. So I'm going to go in and graph them. y equals negative 2x plus 2. If you can see it or not, I didn't think about the glare. Negative 2x plus 2, and I'm going to click down and do y is equal to negative 2 thirds x minus 2, just like that. Then I'm going to hit the graph button here. And I'm going to look to see where they intersect. And they intersect right here, which is in the positive x's, which will help me when I look at the table. So to get to table, you hit second and then graph, which is the table setting. And you go here, and I'm going to start looking at x's that are in the positive section. So I'm going to click down a little bit. And if you look at number 3, or if x is equal to 3, it has a negative 4 for the first group and a negative 4 for the second one, which means that my answer choice is 3, negative 4. So that's a quick way to do um, solving equations, systems of equations by graphing if you're using the TS-73. If you're using a much higher level calculator or even a slightly higher level calculator, there should be an intersect function. You should definitely check that out. I'm sure there's videos on where to find it or at least some information on Google. So uh, good luck with what you're working on, and uh, I hope this uh, goes well for you.